Welcome to our first episode of Open Book Black Excellence, Gail Borden Public Library's series celebrating Black History Month through the words and stories of individuals who have demonstrated high standards of excellence in our community. We will now welcome our first speaker, poet Chastity Gunn, who was the inaugural Poets Laureate for the city of Elgin from 2019 to 2021. Now that her term has ended, she is officially our Poet Laureate Emeritus. In June, 2021, she was awarded a fellowship from the Academy of American Poets, a great honor, a native of Alabama. She is a graduate of Hamlin University's MFA program where she studied poetry. Her work has been published in The Bitter Zoet and Rock, Paper, Scissors, as well as other publications. Gunn frequently participates in readings and workshops across the country and here in Elgin, including the Gail Borden Public Library. Chastity Gunn is an instructor in the English department at Elgin Community College. Her book, How to Create a World, uses nursery rhymes to guide children in writing their own poems. So let's give a warm welcome to Ms. Poet Chastity Gunn. And how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Ms. Dominique? I am doing awesome. Thank you so very much. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I do have a few questions for you, if I may. All right, my first question to you is, what does excellence mean to you personally? Well, for me personally, uh, excellence is about the proper stewardship of whatever it is that you've been given, typically uh, in the terms of gifts or talents, and that when you use those gifts, you use those talents, you do that to the best of your ability, um, that you have a high standard and that you want to present that gift to the best that you can. I also think that that means having attention to detail. I'm a very detail-oriented person. And sometimes it's those small details that can make a huge impact. So that's what excellence means to me. And I agree to that. I absolutely agree. Now, my second question to you is, what must be done to encourage excellence in ourselves and others? I think to encourage excellence in ourselves means that Particularly, we have to take a moment and be honest about the history in this country. Um, and from its inception, there was this myth of Black inferiority um, that was pro uh, propagated by white supremacy that basically said Black people were not intelligent, we could not create art, so on and so forth. And so the reason why there is even a need for the term Black excellence is because even today, there is not a widespread belief that Black people are capable of being excellent and creating things of excellence. And so I think that if we're going to promote excellence in others, we must acknowledge that in this country, there has not always been an appreciation and an acknowledgement that excellence exists in the form of Black people. And then once we do that, I think that it's important that we let everyone know no matter who you are, that you are capable of creating excellence. And I've heard the, the cliche of what gets rewarded gets repeated. And so when we see excellence, no matter who it's coming from, that we commend that person, we commend and acknowledge that, hey, this is excellence. And so I think that that's one way we can do that. I agree. All right, and then my uh, uh, third question, my final question is, what can we all do to promote excellence? I think there are some simple ways that we can do to promote excellence. Um, most of us are spending time on social media. So if you go somewhere, if you experience something that you feel is excellent, let people know. A lot of times we let people know when we have a bad experience, but why not let people know when we have an excellent experience. I think that in classrooms that students need to be exposed to excellence of all shades throughout all times of the year. So for example, we should not just be talking about Black excellence in the month of February. We can definitely highlight it and we should, but it's important that we are continuing to see excellence throughout all of the year in different forms from people of different backgrounds. And again, when we see it, we need to say that's excellence and to, to even thank people for sharing their excellence with us and not you know, withholding that excellence and acknowledging that 
it's a gift. You know, when someone writes a beautiful poem and they deliver it with such passion and energy to acknowledge, wow, that was an excellent poem. Thank you for sharing that, um, you know, with me. So I think we can promote uh, excellence and encourage it in others just through simple gratitude. Exactly. And is this something uh, that you provide through your guidance and your in your teachings to your students? Is that something that you incorporate? Can you tell Absolutely. a little bit? Sure. Um, one thing I do in my classroom that I that I continue to try to work on is to encourage my students to make mistakes. And so sometimes in the academic world, you know, we can train our students that it's all about the grade, get the A, get the A, get the A. And so students are looking for formulas for how they can do that. And sometimes you discover excellence, you stumble upon it, right? It's a process, it's a journey. And so I try to create that in my classroom through different exercises, through different prompts that just allow them to explore. Um, I did an activity uh, this past semester where my students were writing about eviction and I put pictures through, up throughout the room of different um, looks of eviction different ways that it could look. And I had the student, okay, pick a picture that speaks to you and write about it. And I was blown away at how beautiful the language that the students created. This is an academic writing class. This is not a creative writing class. Um, and these students were doing this for the first time and they created just beautiful introductions. And so I think that Creating an environment where people can explore, where they can make mistakes is a way that we can um, you know, promote excellence. Another thing that I do in my classroom is I allow students to rewrite essays because again, excellence is not something that happens overnight. Sometimes we need another attempt. And so trying to create that environment um, in the classroom because I don't promote um, perfectionism. Perfectionism and excellence are not the same. Excellence is I'm doing the best that I can do. I'm giving what I have. Here's my offering. Whereas perfectionism is usually coming from shame, guilt, sometimes trauma, um, you know, fear of what people will think, not feeling good enough, a deficient mindset. Whereas excellence is about abundance. It's like, here's what I have, you know, enjoy. Whereas perfectionism is usually about okay, I don't have good enough, so let me just try super hard to overcompensate. Gotcha, gotcha. Wonderful to hear. Well, we, you definitely is a representation of excellence, and uh, we really appreciate everything that you do through your guidance and what you do in our community. And uh, so that kind of ends what we have for today. Um, and we want to thank you, Ms. Uh, Chastity Gunn, for uh, allowing us your time um, and to share you with the world. So thank you so very much. And thank you, everyone out there for watching. Welcome to this chapter of Open Book Black Excellence. I'm Sarah Vetter with the Library's Community Engagement Team. And it's my honor to welcome our special guest today, Frederick Wims. Now, Fred was born in Chicago. He graduated with honors in computer animation and fine arts from Columbia College. And Fred is currently community resource coordinator with the city of Elgin, as well as a board member with Side Street Art Studio. And just a man about town. He's funneling his creative energies in multiple ways and many cool projects throughout our city. So big welcome to Fred Wims. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm well. So why don't we start, Fred, with, you know, you have a pretty extensive biography. So tell us about some of the projects you've worked on and work you've done that's led you to where you are today. Yeah, so um, I actually went to high school here in in Elgin. Uh, uh, so uh, from after Elgin High, um, I went to Columbia College. And then um, after learning, uh, my background was fine, uh, at the time was computer animation, traditional animation, and a minor in fine arts. Um, I used that degree and uh, actually nailed the job with uh, VeggieTales. Um, so I would, did like my, you know, three films under, under VeggieTales. I worked on as a cleanup artist. And then after that, um, I was kind of trying to find my way. Uh, VeggieTales wasn't my fit. So I was finding my way. And, um, and it, it was this fine arts that kind of brought me back into my little niche. Um, uh, 
And so I uh, exhibit and show shows, um, paintings, uh, can installments, anything under the, I don't know, almost anything under the umbrella of fine arts. Um, I was kind of in dabbled and um, I showed. So, uh, and then after that, uh, in the middle of showing, um, kind of, um, you know, got noticed in my hometown of Belgium. Um, and uh, from that, uh, got me the gig of uh, Nightmare on Chicago Street. So um, I was the first uh, art director of that and kind of made uh, the ideas into a visual thing. Um, uh, so I've been doing that for uh, almost 12 years. Um, and and then working with the city kind of got involved in more of the, the community-based stuff. So um, um, and that's kind of led me into what being with uh, Side Street and on a board member. I just love what Side Street did. Um, I love that it was a community-based organization and it was all about arts. Um, and that's like how I like to connect with the community is through arts. Um, so that was like a perfect fit for me. And then also um, I did something on my own. Uh, I'm a leader and creator of uh, Your Neighbor. Um, and Your Native, Your Neighbor is like a art collective community. Um, so like uh, we did art shows um, based on um, the idea of who's your neighbor, right? Like who's the person right next to your house? Like who's that stranger that you've been there to all this time and kind of make connections. And that was kind of like the basis of our shows and the basis of that group. Um, so um, and then from that kind of led me into the job I'm in right now, community resource coordinator. Um, being uh, as such connected to the community, it was like a perfect fit for me to work within the city, um, not just a contractor, but like uh, for the city as um, uh, doing volunteer programs, which I was a super volunteer for the city because uh, Nightmare on Chicago Street is a volunteer event. Um, so it kind of like worked out. Um, and also we do uh, community service that's court ordered as well. Um, and actually bringing those people and kind of getting them back to the city and kind of getting them back into the community. It all fit my role. It's like things I care about um, um, in general. So, uh, and that's kind of how I land here, I guess. <laughs> what does excellence mean to you personally? Um, personally, um, when I think of the word excellence, I think about people that we, uh, we or the community or society call excellent, right? Like um, when you think of like Martin Luther King, you know, we're like uh, excellent. Like he created something um, and pushed a wave of um, change that was almost impossible, right? At that time, right? So I believe what excellence, the definition is actually doing something of having a goal to do what most people believe it's impossible, but you in your soul or in your idea don't believe you know, that it's impossible and you a self can, can uh, do it and achieve uh, it. Um, so for me, it's not just being the best of what you do. It's also doing something that you doing it a little bit different than anyone else. It's like adding your own uh, fun, fit, you know, fingerprint, your thumbprint, your, your own identity to it um, and making it so unique to yourself that uh, you're in a different category for this thing. So it's always about change, right? Um, excellence, if you're doing something and you're breaking borders, you're excellent. That's this, I feel like that's gotta be the definition, right? Um, that's all. What can we do to encourage excellence in others and in ourselves? Um, <clears throat> man, I think, um, Leaving room, I think uh, as as parents have a role in that, uh, teachers have a role in that, um, any people that feel like they have influence on others has a role in that. Um, you know, the baseball coach has a role in that, right? Um, we have to show examples of, uh, of excellence and then also show show uh, and leave room for growth of creativity. So when we teach kids um, uh, about uh, scientists, math, English, the arts, um, sports, we always got to give the idea of you're new to this, you're going to bring a, no, a, a new um, avenue to this because you're different. You're different as your fingerprint. We are all the same, but we are different. So you have the opportunity to do something different in this and be excellent at it. I think 
when we think of order of excellence, we always think about hard work and um, putting in the time and sacrifice, um, um, having the, the resources um, and having the means. And then sometimes I don't think those things are all true to get to excellence. Sometimes about having a lack of means, like the, the thing of it's not there and you have to have it to survive or you need it to help someone, your family, your neighbor, your community. Um, and, and that's when, what drives real excellence, honestly. It's, um, it's like, a, <clears throat> I think it's uh, the balance of time and life. Any final thoughts on what we can all do to promote excellence? Um, what we can all can do, I think, I think um, it's, it's a hard question to answer because what we all can do, I think it's whatever that drives you, your passion or work or your children or <clears throat> church or religion or whatever it is, the way you can push excellent or, or have um, a plane for excellence can be to help out. I think it's just go and do those things and have a, you know, like go for your passions, go for your dreams, go for whatever you like and enjoy um, truly like beyond borders that like you enjoy and go for it. Because while you're doing that, someone's going to pick up that energy that you bring into that item or that thing, like if it's Christianity or if it's the, you know, if you, this the way how you, you know, believe in uh, Christ, it can, this by watching would change someone's perspective of what can be perceive uh, about the activity um, and give that person the opportunity to find their own excellence in it. You know what I mean? Um, and then, and I don't know why I use Christianity as a, as a thing, but uh, let's say it was, um, uh, use something like, for me, I'm gonna use something that's very personal for as artists. Like I'm a painter, drawer, artist, you know, you know, I can do anything visually. I can see it and, and build it, right? So for me, I always push for the greatness of myself, right? Like I wanna push me out farther and farther. I don't believe in what people see beyond me. I'm just trying to prove to myself that I'm great at this, right? I'm, uh, and achieve something that's impossible in my mind that I feel like I can, can, can consume and be. Um, and doing that, the people that pull with me when I'm doing these activities, cause it's very, um, when I do art, it's always community-based. There's someone's around. I, I figured the fact that when creating art, I like people around me. <laughs> I love community. So, um, so when I'm painting, I'm having like my son or, uh, or my girlfriend's in the room, or if I'm building some big thing, I, I, I'm doing it with uh, uh, volunteers uh, for Nightmare Chicago Street and I'm building with them. And, and these people are some of artists, some are not. But in the activity of doing what I believe that is like my fully incomplete passion that I'm in love, and I'm trying to push for my greatness, I'm also showing someone my drive and they might see something in me that they never seen before, right? And it might tip their over to them to give them to their point of excellence, right? And it may not be even art for them. It might be like, oh, I seen Fred like, he killed it on this sculpture and uh, he created uh, Mona Lisa's face out of clay and I loved it. And I, I just love how he, his energy and his passion, you know, like it's like, and that person might just see it as like, hey, the energy and that passion that that person has, I want to have that for me too. Maybe it's not like, I can't, it's not ceramics for me. It's not building this three dimensional thing. It's not art. But maybe, you know, I always love to write stories and, you know, and I'm really not practicing as hard as I should, or I'm not putting things out there for people to see. And maybe that gives him the little tip over he needs or him or her that he needs uh, or she needs to get to that next point. And I think that's 
That's the whole point. And, and that's what you should do. And that's what everyone should do, whatever it is. Like when moms take their daughters to work and, and they're like a nurse and then have that free day of like showing like what she loves of why I've been doing it 24 seven and why I'm here and doing this help. And this girl can see from her own eyes what her mom does and what's her passion is. And that will like, change that little girl forever right um so i think that's what we need to do show others our passion and our fight for getting to our passions at this time and um and like i said that goes beyond everything so that's raising my kids or um you know cooking pizza that's my thing you know i like to make the perfect pizza pie and uh, it makes me happy you know show that like give someone like some some community to see that and and then and then continue to do what you love and then i think that was the spark that we need to um provoke excellence right that's that's it that's the spark that's all we need so fred thank you so much for your thoughts your yeah, your um, creativity your advocacy and uh we, I'm so glad to introduce you to, I know you, you know a lot of people in Elgin already, but this will uh, introduce you to even more. So thanks for being part of Open Book Black Excellence and uh, we wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Fred. No problem.